So have you heard of the Cuban resonance being like 7.32 or 23? Yeah, I don't know about to think about all that. I mean, they they say the Schumann Schumann resident resonance resonance. <laughs> Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. The Schumann resonance is um, a certain hertz, but um, I don't know. I think that changes from time to time too. So um, I'm not really too much. If something is like a static, I don't necessarily believe it. I, well, I've heard that they're putting that into commercials since they were talking in commercials. Well, I mean, if you think about frequencies, whatever frequency you put out around, it'll affect that. Like, <coughs> suppose they were part of the body's mapped out as a frequency. I mean, you can use a frequency. There's devices out there. There's devices out there that you can tune certain frequencies and affect that part of the body. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I think it only affects you, not only, but would mostly affect you if your body is too static. In other words, if it's able to fluctuate, um, which means it's not caught up in the stories, it's not caught up in very specific patterns, then it's always fluctuating and moving. Mm. So you'd have to have a very constant, constant <coughs> barrage of a certain frequency for it to affect. Right. So if you watch a commercial, you're only getting a couple of seconds of that. And if your body isn't locked in, then um, then it wouldn't be wouldn't be a big issue. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get started, and tonight we're going to be covering, um, what are we covering tonight? <laughs> uh, hips, upper legs, and knees. Um, we're going to do, and after this we're going to do one more of the outside, and then we're going to go internal, which should be fun. Uh, we're going to be going over one system at a time, like the circulatory system. It may even take two two weekends, I'm not sure. So we'll just explore like digestive system, what it relates to, what are the issues it can be causing or what that imbalance is related to. Um, and then we'll go from there. Um, Donna created a little sheet here that y'all can uh, check out. And it's um, just an idea of how to map it. It's kind of a work in progress. If you have any ideas, you can share. Um, this could actually be one session because of the different muscle groups and the different meridians. So just something to play with. And um, she's going to be helping out in a couple of other ways. So we'll see how that works out. Um, we're just going to jump into it. Um, I say this all the time, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Our mission statement is to help individuals understand the links between their minds, emotions, body, life, so that they can... Uh, live a more balanced, healthy life, and the goal is to embody a pure heart and a peaceful, focused mind. Um, it is one thing to read and obtain new information, but said information like religion is useless unless one can embody the information. We embody the information by practicing, and that's what we're doing in the groups like this. What is practicing? Putting forth effort to do those things you read about. It is the action side of growth and self-development. So in our practice, when we come together, our practice is to, we have like a verbal lesson or written worksheets that we go over. That's the attunement. That's the um, playing with the information so you can embody it. Then there's the meditation, expanding and developing your, your awareness, your consciousness. And then the kundalini tapping and the qigong are just ways of cleansing and preparing the energy pathways and physical body, the vessel. And then pranayama breath work and chanting or is building and refining your chi, your focus, and how to direct it. Um, in my definition, I can't help but pull in spirituality into um, what I'm sharing. So spirituality is to be aware of yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and to be able to direct your mind, body, spirit appropriately. So basically, the whole effort of Jesus or a Buddha or a Bodhidharma uh, is nothing but how to undo that which society has done to you or us. Bodhi and Bo uh, uh, Buddhism is the understanding possessed by a Buddha, which just means your how things work. And that's what we're, we're learning in this group, is how things work, what the map is, and what the body is reflecting. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a process that, I, for me, personally, has taken time. I'm seeing that it's speeding up. Um, it's like when I first taught Reiki years ago, it seems like when I first took Reiki, it took me a while to feel the energy, you know, I didn't feel it the first time. 
Um, but over time, at the classes I've taught, in the beginning, people have a hard time feeling things, and then that's got to where the last second degree Reiki I taught, which comes in with long distance. Everybody was doing long distance with no problem at all. It was really great in depth. So it has this way of speeding up. As more grow and learn and grow, then the process of the ones following speeds up too. It's kind of like that analogy of there's a wheat field, you know, high wheat, waist high, and one person walks through. You can kind of see the path, but the more people that walk through, the path gets wider and it gets, it's easier to see. Um, so basically, we're undoing the stuff that may, has made us unnatural. Um, so basically, um, bodhi means in awareness of or enlightenment. My translation of enlightenment is in awareness of. So it's basically understanding how things work and to see beyond the suffering or the symptoms of that. So to me, spirituality is um, not the religion. Religion is like the covering of a book and spirituality are like the, the information that comes within the words that you read. I guess we'll go ahead and start. Our, I didn't do our chant the last couple of times, so we're going to do it this time. And this chant is a kundalini chant, and basically it's tuning in to that place where you talk about when you say namaste, which is basically when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, we are one. So we're going to chant this, Om Namo Guru De Namo, and we're going to chant that three times to focus our energy to now and to, to tie into that spiritual awareness, God, that we're, that's all around us. We're never, we're never ever, ever separated from God. That's an illusion. And a lot of, you know, that's what religion is supposed to do is to heal that illusion. And even religion speaks to that because it's re-ligand. Ligaments are what ties the parts of the body together. So religion is meant to re-tie you to God, but you are never disconnected. So, um, so we're just going to chant this three times. So just take a deep breath in. Letting it out. Om Namo. Deep breath in. Guru De Namo. Deep breath in. Om Namo. Let's just quiet us down, focus us in the now. Oh, speaking of that, I forgot to put this in here. <laughs> I surprised myself. Um, the now. This came up Thursday, and I want to throw it in here. The now. I think we're, I don't think, from my perception, we are supposed to be living in the now. And um, what happens with our stories and our perceptions, our beliefs, expectations it kicks us out of being in the moment in the now and I put this uh, drawing together you know how you know how I like to play with words and it's like you have your past going into the past you have your future going into the future and it right in the center right in the very now this moment you're in right now is the only place that your I am resides so if you're thinking about something in the past you're thinking about something you're going to do in the future you're not here in the present and if you're not here in the present, to the degree that you're not here in the present, you don't have any power. So if you're looking at your life from a past story, or you're looking at a past aspect of your, um, what's happened to you, your power is not in the moment. So you could look at this circle here as the toroidal field. Remember that, you got the center, that column, hollow center down the uh, center, <laughs> the hollow center down the center center. You've got this line here in the now, represents that hollow tube, the toroidal tube, and the energy that surrounds the body. If you're not in the center tube, you're in the periphery. And if you're in the periphery, that means your power is not here in the moment. So I made that on, up, up on the uh, board up there. I made a little quick drawing today. And you see you have the heart where the I am resides. That's off to your right. 
The heart is where the I am resides. Below that's the brain. From there you go to emotions, neurochemicals, hormones, endocrine chakras, systems, organs, meridians, and bones. Okay, you can see this, uh, the psychology aspect tends to relate to emotions, neurochemicals, hormones, and the endocrine system. And physiology relates to neurochemicals, hormones, endocrine systems, organs, and bones. And there's an overlap. And actually, I would say they're, they're, they're both completely overlapped. But there's an obvious overlap there. And those, what, what's, the emotions we kick out, the neurochemicals, the hormones, how our chakras are all aligned, are based on where our energy is in any given moment. So are you in your I am, or are you letting time come in? Time has all your stories. Your stories are always based in time, usually childhood and things like that. So and so did this to me, this person did this to me, those are your stories. And those stories direct what emotions are going to be produced, what neurochemicals, how your chakras are going to flow. And if you're letting time come in and take over your stories, or your stories come in and take over your I am, then it dictates everything else. And if you want to be fully, completely empowered, you've got to be in your I am, which means you've got to be completely in the moment now. So. Your stories are not in the now, but locked in time. Your stories take you out of now and away from the true knowing that is around you. I'm going to play a little thing for you that happened Thursday at the end of Thursday night, but most people didn't catch it because we were all getting up and moving. And Mary Ann sitting here next to me, she was um, the one that it played within this little thing that we did. We were talking about Thursday night we were doing the tapping. Like I said, we were all pretty much done. And then um, I get up, um, or I'm about to close off my recorder, and I make a little joke, and then Marianne comes up and says something right after that. Let me get to where I need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yep. Well, thank y'all for coming up and uh, playing. So remember, whenever you start feeling negative, a story might. <laughs> Goldilocks and the three bears story. You hear that? What I said? Goldilocks and the three bears. Uh -huh. Okay. So I said that jokingly because I said, you remember if you, if you caught up in a story that you need to ask yourself what story am I? So I made up a joke. Now my story is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. What happens in the next two seconds, though, is freaky. So it's hard to hear, but Marianne walks. She didn't hear me because there was a bunch of noise going on. So Marianne walks up to me because I had the animal book out because part of what came up, Bambi was talking about the buffalo. So I pull. Um, so I brought my animal book out. So after. I've sat down there and I made that little joke. Marianne didn't hear me, but she comes up and you can barely hear that in what she says. But basically she says, can I look at that book, that animal book, because last night I had a dream about three bears. So do, do you know what happened? Do you know the significance of what just happened between that short amount of time? I picked up on her information and I made a joke about it. Okay? If you're in the here and now, you pick up what's relevant to you in the here and now. If you've got some old bullshit story you're playing, you're only going to pick up information in the now that's relevant to the old bullshit story. So you've got to get rid of your old stories and come to the present, and then you pick up information that's going to fit you. So I picked that up as a joke, but think about it. How many times are you picking up information that really is, you know, you may make a joke about something, but who knows what you're picking up? I mean, I made that, she didn't even hear me say about the three bear thing, but here I am talking about, um, you know, I make a little joke. My, why would I make that particular joke two seconds before she walks up and says, can I borrow your book um, and look up bears? Because I had to dream about three bears, right? So my mind picks up her little thought and I make a joke about it. I, I tie in my own information. But the main thing I want you to get is that if you're in the past somewhere, you know, caught up in some story that you really don't want to keep happening, you're only going to pick up information that's based on that because you're not in the here and now. If you're here and now, that's where all your intuition is. That's why it pays when you're working with someone, if you're doing energy, Reiki energy on anybody, something like that. If you're not here fully and present in the moment, you're not going to pick up what you need to for that person. So um, to me, that was just a really interesting little experience there. Because she walks up, you know, two seconds after I say that, she's like, can I borrow that book? Maybe, 
Now we'll listen to it again. You may be able to hear it more now that you know what the words are going to say. So. Story goes, he's free in that area, and then he has to unhook another one and hook it up. And what's interesting about that is from there, he goes down this tube, and comes out, and it's like a rebirth from doing that. Exactly. Right? Oh. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you all for coming out and uh, playing. So remember, whenever you start feeling negative, a story might. Like Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. I picked up her vibe and I made a joke about it. That's all I did, right? So we're picking up information like that all the freaking time. But if you're not here in the now, you're not going to be picking up the information that's relevant. In other words, I might not even pick that up. I mean, if I was even more present, if I wasn't distracted teaching the class, I might have actually tuned into that specifically. You know what I mean? But at least I was enough here. Huh? And walked mm -hmm. over and handed her the book. Yeah, yeah, or so, yeah, something Can like I that. Can I ask you one question yeah. on, on what we talked about last week? Sure. Um, on the, being, like, not being specific, like you said, you say. Oh, oh about I'm, the creating yeah, aspect? Yeah, on okay. the creating aspect. I understand that, and I think that's great, and mm -hmm. I like it. But I'm a little confused on that part that you're going, the universe won't know what you want. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. If you're not specific. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little confused on where do you draw the line between those two? Um, for me, and I was playing with something the other day, um, and I noticed in the moment that I wasn't being specific enough because I was getting what I wanted, but it wasn't to the degree, degree I wanted. So my, my, my suggestion is you play with it, mm -hmm. and if the result is that it's not exactly what you want, then you change it to, to, to be more specific. So, um, like, um, this is going to be a great day. Mm -hmm. We might want, you, you might want something specific to happen, so you kind of put that into your, this is going to be a great day, a great relaxing day. So sometimes specifics do pay, but even within that, it's not super specific. You're not telling what's going to happen. You're just kind of highlighting, you know, you're directing it more. So you want, sometimes it's important. Go ahead, Deborah. I think what, she, what you're talking about is what I kind of caught also, but this is how he explained it to me. You can be specific, like, I said, I want a re uh, loving relationship with my son and my daughter, mm -hmm. okay? But John meant also, you can't say, well, universe, I want a loving relationship with Jackie, a partner, or whatever, and, and, and that happened. Just say, I want a loving relationship with a partner or a husband, if that's what you want. But don't name, don't be specific and name the person. I mean, that may not be what's best for you. For you or for that person. Uh, there you go. That's and I get that, but I just didn't get where, where you draw the line. Give me, for instance. I'm, I'm, well, I guess she sort of is, but I'm not. No, she's a you. What, what, you give it, for instance, um, um, where you're confused. Um, like if you want, like, what you, I want to be happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, That's pretty vague. vague. That's, That's pretty vague. Right. So what do you want right. to be happy about or with? What well, makes you happy? <laughs> but but you know, but choosing yeah. but choosing to change the story to I choose to be happy may be quite a you know, could be a huge change from what it used to be. But then once you get that, you go, well, I want this, 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 you know. So I think my answer to be, as time goes by, you learn exactly how specific you want to, you, you want you it to be. to be. Yeah, like, because it's kind of concerning two jobs, uh, two mm -hmm. different jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want actually, I want to do both of them. Mm -hmm. And at first I thought, okay, I can only do this, I can only do that. And now I'm thinking, well, I'm just doing them part time, so I can do both. There you go. Yeah. And then I thought I was being too specific. No, no, no. Because no. I was saying, saying it. and then I was mm -hmm. saying the universe may be saying, oh, no, you need to go focus on this or focus on that, but I'm not allowing it because I'm going, why well, won't you do both? See, and there's, there's a little bit of where I've, I've begun to change for me, okay, when you bring the universe in, okay? And um, this may be a bit of a bleep for some people, um, but it's a bleep I'm in the process of. And it's not, I'm no longer waiting for the universe to tell me what I need to do. I believe that's an old school thing, um, just like I'm, I was born to have this to happen and now I've got to do that. I, I, I think that's one level of learning, but once you get past that, it's like, it's like spiritual baby, spiritual adolescence, you know, you're growing up. And, you know, when you really grow up, you get to choose exactly what you want. And then, of course, there's a whole school you learn when you enter when you start doing that, right? So where I'm being pushed is, 
no longer waiting for something to happen, you're making it happen. And, and, and I'll bring a full spectrum here of, of where I've been leading the group based on where I've been. And um, it dealt with my past relationship. Um, and, you know, most of y'all know here that I've had a divorce um, this last year. And um, I was trying, there's a couple levels here. I was trying to stay someplace that my heart was no longer. I still love Laurie, always will. We're friends today. I mean, I, I see her at least once a week. We're friends. Um, my heart had changed around the situation, and I tried to make my, my mind, or actually my heart, fit my mind. Okay, That's where I was, because I think that's where most people are, is you're trying to make your heart match your mind. In other words, your mind says you should, 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 should. And then your heart is not feeling that, so you got to make your heart match the mind to stay there. But I couldn't do that; it was uncomfortable. And you know, when I would do like I Ching readings or a tarot card reading or something, it would give me the information to stay, or whatever, right? And I was like, hmm, I don't feel it though. But I'd be getting this other information. Then it's got to a point where it got so uncomfortable for my heart that I had to leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I learned after all that is the stuff I've been sharing, like the tarot card reading. The tarot card reading doesn't it's come from the expected. universe. It doesn't come from God. It doesn't come from spirit. It comes from you, what you're putting out. Okay. okay? So if you want that job, go for that job. If you don't like it, then your feelings will change and your heart will direct you to a new place. It's all about being now in the moment instead of trying to figure it out. If I was in the moment, I, you know, if I was back in the moment when it, when it began to not feel comfortable, then I would be in an entirely different place now because I moved when, if I was in the right place. That's why I'm pushing some people because it isn't about waiting for something to happen, it's about waiting for you to choose what's gonna happen. So you can stay in this negative relationship for three more years, but it doesn't mean you were supposed to. It just means that whatever reason you were stuck there because you were unwilling to or, or, or unable, and once you move those things out of the way, then what happens is the power comes back to you in the center moment. Then you get to big choose. You begin to write. You have the authority. You know, it, and it's like the next step to the next grade where you're not waiting on somebody to tell you what to do. You just do it because your heart's telling you. Your heart's telling you to follow it. And I learned in there that I had it fucking backwards like most people do. I'm not supposed to be getting my heart to match my mind. My heart is the center of the chakra system. It relates to the soul, which is the uh, sun in, in astrology. And the sun is at the center of the, of the system. It's like the heart's at the center here. You, your heart tells you what you need to be doing in the moment. We only get fucked up lives when we lives when we our heart tells us to do something, but from past programming, perceptions, beliefs, judgments, we don't move on it. That's what fucks your life up. Period. But if you're in the moment, you go for the job because it feels good. Who knows? Two months, three months later, like a year, you may not like it. But the cool thing is, if you're in the center, you can change again. Life becomes fucked up when you go into this, and I was like, oh, I can only do this or this, and if I make this choice, I'm stuck there. That's the crazy thing. You're not stuck anywhere. You're not stuck anywhere once you realize that you're free to make the choice at any given moment. That's a lie we bought into. And what I realized, the number one thing that's changed my life dramatically just from that moment is that I'm supposed to be clearing the crap out of my brain that tells me that I'm supposed to be doing certain things that's preventing me from following my heart. If I'm in my heart, there's no wrong. Yeah, you, you may go into a relationship, you may do a job, whatever it is, but it's always flowing. Okay? Once it gets contracted, you know that it's time to change something. And if your mind says, well, I can't do this because that's bad, well, that's one of the stories that's got you locked in to the wrong place. And you've lost your freedom, and you, and you lost your power, is what's happened. So, and this is why I keep coming back to this phrase, and I try to harp on it, but, you know, I hear all the time, everything happens for a reason. I do believe that. Everything does happen for a reason. But sometimes that reason mm -hmm. is because there's a bunch of locked up bullshit misperceptions and judgments in your mind. That's the only reason this happened. It's not like spirits making you stay there is what I'm trying to say. It's you that's got yourself stuck there. It's not like you're there learning some karmic bullshit lesson. You've got yourself stuck there. You've got to get yourself out. You've got to get yourself back to your heart. That's, what I'm, that's where I'm on right now, anyway. In conversations with God, Neil Donald Walsh says there's, there's no whiteboard in the sky that has written on it what your purpose is. There's no, nothing out there like that. It's you. You're the one that writes your purpose. You're the one that writes on that line and says what happens to you. Um, this image up here, mm -hmm. the line being the center of your toroidal field. Now, would you say that 
energetically or on a vibrational match that our thoughts of the past or the future exactly. perhaps float around yeah. our toroidal field. We were just talking about that earlier. And, <laughs> yeah. and then so those are floating around and then why we attract those same things is that same energy or vibration exactly. over here gets like mm -hmm. attracted to that right. and then sucked into our event horizon and then back down and Ex so the cycle. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So once you're in your center clean and pure, actually all your seals, seals are opened up and things are flowing. Why our chakras aren't aligned is because our sexual energy may be caught up in this story out in our peripheral toroidal, toroidal field and this and this and so we're, we're scattered. We're all over the fucking place because there is only one moment now. There is no past. I mean, if you're thinking about the if you're thinking about the moment right now, there is no past at all. Period. Okay. And there's no future. There's only one real moment. Okay. Our minds are making up stories or caught up in stories that are blocking the energy in our field. Okay. It appears to be past, but there's no such thing as past. It's done. Is done. Right. So it's it's what we've done to our energy field more than anything. So clearing up things from the past is really pulling your energy that's scattered out in your field into your core. And the more that you're scattered out, the less energy you have. So if you're going to say with authority, now Jesus walking up to a leper and say, stand up. You've got to be 100% pure, 100% present to do something like that. And our level now where I feel like I'm going is to get in that place where I'm starting to play with that and master that within me. So then it can go out. But there's no way in hell that you can do that for another, you know, say get up and walk, if you haven't been practicing that yourself with your own issues, right? So, and we all have these stories. So and so did this to me. So and, so and as long as you had, did you listen to what we did with Katie? I didn't. If you get a chance to listen to that, that's a really good example of how the stories are going to keep repeating the same same issue. But it really comes down to the very simple thing. What you know, I came across a long time ago. But I'm such a logical person. I had to go this path. And obviously, if you showed up here, you're you're very similar minded because the path suits you too is that I had to see the mechanism. So I learned a long time ago. You just focus on what you want to get. But now I know the whole mechanism behind that. And yeah, you simply, once you know what you want, that's what you focus on, period. But if you're like here, I want a, a good job, and the story goes, well, it's going to take a lot of you know, effort to do that. That story robs you of energy becoming that. So really it comes down to self-mastery. If it's all about consciousness, self-mastery is you're mastering where any given point your consciousness is. So if, my, um, so if I'm saying I am wealthy and wise, but then I've got this other program that says, well, I'm going to have to work my ass off. Well, I'm pulling energy away from that. So it all comes back to, even, and here's the hard part, is when you've got a story that makes you feel bad, right, then what happens is once that story makes you feel bad, we tend to get caught up in it. So it really comes down to, you're not going to let, it's like the toroidal field. Here's this swirling energy, and we, we went over this a little bit on that audio. The toroidal field is like, I imagined this years ago, here's this, toroidal, this energy swirling, right, all around me, okay, and there's this hollow tube in center. So I'm centered and peaceful here. And as soon as, I, as soon as something catches my attention that's flying by, what happens to my energy? Am I, am I any longer in the center? Or did I just follow that out? No, you're I, I followed it out, right? Yeah. So really, being in power means or being centered in this moment, being present. So it, it turns out to be this. If you can be 100% present, that's the only time you're in the presence of God. Only time you're in the presence of God is if you're 100% present, 100% now. That's why meditation, things like that that make you lose your mind, help you be in that presence. It's not like you went anywhere. You're just finally present. But you can be present at any given moment, as long as you don't buy into any story. So our, our biggest challenge is, is when, because life is trying to hand us a story everywhere we turn. You turn on the news, you turn on this, you turn on that. Everybody's trying to hand you a story. And the more people that feed a story, the more energy it has and the more, re the more, uh, more it's going to likely happen in your life or in the collective global thing. Carla, I wanted just to be real clear that you were real clear. <laughs> so you started out asking the question about being specific. So I wanted to know, do you, do you see that the more specific that you are about you, the more you become the creator of what you want? But when it involves another person, you, that's, where, that's where you really can't get specific, other than what it so relates just what, to you what with that So just what deals person. with me on a personal, I mean, just yeah. on my, in mm -hmm. my little field. 
Exactly. I mean, it, it, regardless of other in people. relationship yeah. to other people, it's it's more like what is it personally that I want, but not you. But you can't just get so specific that you want to change something about that. Person. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, 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 or. That's you not that. Even, that's not no, what that I'm wasn't really what, it, what it was. I, I, this is where I get hung up, John, in, in trying to understand and explain this. Is that part where you don't? It's all about us. It's like, what is it we want? So, I, so whatever it is that you start putting out about another person, it's like I'll st I just look at what I'm writing and then I'll change it and then I'll just back it up and I'll go, I, I put the word I before all of this so that I can see what I'm wanting in that for me in that yeah. change. And I don't know if that helps, but I just wanted to know yeah. if you were getting clear about some of that. And it's sneaky too. So if you're like, if you're trying to create. If you're trying to create something and then you add somebody else's name in there, I mean, ultimately, you may not, it may not appear that way, but you're trying to write in their book and trying to control them. So it comes away from you not doing any of that. It's like, like Donna said, you focus on what you want and you simply keep writing what you want no matter what anybody else is presenting. Because here's the thing, it's like you're trying to do something, you can ask for all the advice in the world. Everybody's, everybody's really ready to write in your book. Okay? So you listen to all that but you, know, you don't let it affect you. And this is the same thing in healing. So, um, and we've had some pretty good examples, like um, just that night on the recording, I was making some example about, let's say somebody, oh, about the guy that fell off here in town that fell off the overpass and mm -hmm. he didn't die instantly. So as I'm telling that story, a couple of people went, as soon as, as soon as you do something like that, you've given power to that story. So imagine that. Imagine somebody comes in and they're wanting a Reiki session and they're giving you this story of why they're in the way they are. And you go, like, I've got like three tumors of really progressive cancer. And if you go, you just gave the cancer more power than yourself, right? You cannot buy into anybody's story. It's not just like Jesus. State center, it's like, I don't care what you're saying. <laughs> I found that all week. That's been my favorite thing that has really transformed a lot of things for me was not buying into stories. I mean, I didn't actually recognize I was buying mm -hmm. into stories mm -hmm. until that night. Well, and, and, and we, buying That's just means good. you're putting your energy into it. Yeah. You just took your energy and went, pfft. And I, we... I loved whenever you brought that out because all my life I have tried, well, not, no, all my life I've wondered this about my, my own personality. And that was why I never could really get into too many people's stories. I mean, I've seen, you know, thousands of people, you know, in my clinic, and, and I've got family with, with their dramas and things like that. And I wondered one time about myself whether I really had any feelings, you know, about people. And then I, I took that, I stepped back and I said, you know what, I know I do, I love people. And, and I love my family, and I love my clients, and, and I don't want them to be in their pain. But I could just never get wrapped up in the story. And that made me think I wasn't a feeling kind of person for a while. But then I, when, I, when I analyzed that and I said, yes, I am, and I am a loving person, then I just let it go and I said, there, there's got to be some reason why I'm like that. So one of these days I'll find out. And there it was. You know, John sent me that, you know, the YouTubes, and I was listening to that, and I went, oh, my God. You know, 40 years, but I got the answer. <laughs> you know, yeah, and that was that was a great awareness. Yeah, because we want to know that, that to know that because it happens to me a lot. Like mm -hmm. uh, if I see, like when I saw my son's burnt hand, mm -hmm. I couldn't look at it because it hurt me so bad. Right. You know? So basically, you're saying that's got a lot of power. Right. It's like, ooh, cancer. So why can't we? If you, so if you look at cancer. So let me put it this way, not look at it. If you react to cancer just like somebody simply cut their finger, there's a lot less power. In other words, you're looking at it like, because when you go, mm, basically you're saying that looks bad. That's bad, is what you're saying. That's bad. And the more you go, Ugh, the worse it is. And the worse basically means that it's harder to deal with and treat, right? It may leave scars, may die, that type of thing. But if you can look at everything like it's just a scratch, then that, mean, that means you, you, re, you remain... You, rem you, re you keep that power to yourself. You didn't give it to the problem. So I've been practicing with that this past week, and my sessions have quite dramatically changed. So it's not like, oh, here's this dot, I mean, the dot, this uh, spot you're going to have to work out. It's just simply, it's just a big, you know, no big deal. I'm going to stay in this presence, and it's going to change, period. And by that presence, that it does that. So today, somebody came in, 
And one of my least favorite aspects or issues to work on is somebody's in the middle of a bad muscle spasm. Because typically muscle spasms are involving lots of different things. And if you dig in too deep like you need to, it hurts them, right? So I, I practiced that today um, coming from a different space where I didn't get... So, so basically when somebody come in with that problem, I would kind of like, oh, shit. So, right? So where's the power? It's not in me, right? So today I just had a different perspective about it. And I was working. I was like, he, this is what he said. He's like, this is the first time I worked on him. He goes, because somebody referred him. He's like, that's weird. I'm like, what? He said, I just felt that release. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. So it's because I remained in the space of I'm not going to give this power. I have the power over it. And I think that's exactly what Jesus was saying. It's like, no, I have the power over this. And the person thinks they don't have the power, but they do. But they're caught up in the story, whatever that relates to. Mommy did this, blah, blah, blah. You know, I ate a poison apple, whatever. <laughs> so, um, we got to get out of the stories, is what I'm basically... Yeah, earlier, what you were talking about, staying present, uh, it reminded me when I was in my 20s and living in Spokane. And that was when I realized that if I wanted answers, I had to ask a question. And later, as I learned about how the brain works and all this kind of stuff, I realized that that the brain cannot give you what you want unless you ask. You have to form it in a question, and then it will find the answer for you. And I, I was working in a home health department, and I remember the first time I experienced this, I had put out this question that morning. I don't even remember what the question was now. But I was sitting there working, and once I put out the question, you know, it's kind of like I just stay in a, a receptive mode to get the answer. Mm -hmm. And these two women were walking by my desk, and you know, there's I'm not really trying to listen in on their conversation, but they were just walking by, and and it was like unaudible, unaudible. I heard these words, heard these words, unaudible. I heard words, unaudible. I heard words, and then they passed my desk. Well, when you put together what I actually heard, that was the answer to the question I had asked that day. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that is powerful. Mm -hmm. So just keep asking questions and watch for where the answer comes from. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's was it been an amazing journey in life to watch where all these answers come from. Any person, any place, anything. I have a comment. Come at Surprising, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of this. Well, you know what? If you fall into the story, how can you help them out? Exactly. Yeah. That's very good. It's like falling into the water. You know, jumping in the water to save someone. I've done that. You know, as what came up today, I was doing some tapping, and um, my tappy friends, uh, what came up was having to figure it out. And what's interesting is I'm coming to the end of that for me. You know, it'd be nice to have gotten this years ago because <laughs> now I've pretty much figured it out but um, but my thing is I don't have to figure it out to get what I need um, so sometimes the answer is you don't have to figure it all out for that answer to come because it comes in lots of different ways because the toroidal field is tied into a much larger field if you're caught up in your stories you can think about this if you're caught up in your stories it creates a shield around you so imagine, let's say here's Carla's energy, and this energy is floating. She's so got the toroidal tube, which is basically the Torah in the Bible with the seven seals on the Torah, the roll of Torah, or on that. That's basically, and only Jesus Christ can open that. Jesus Christ superstar. So you got seven seals on this toroidal um, parchment, which is basically a rolled up energy seal. seal okay. So and your toroidal field's out here rolling up. If you've got a bunch of stories and energy caught up in the toroidal field. See, it doesn't end there. It's like you're in a sea. So if energy is coming along, it's going to hit your stories. What's coming back to you is going to be filtered through all your stories. So if you're completely clear and in the moment, whatever you're putting out, you're going to get information coming straight back from you. Because only when you have all these stories do you get only information from yourself. Because, you know, when I'm doing tapping and stuff like that, that information isn't coming from my mind. It's coming from the huge super collective. And there's no limits on that as long as you're out of the freaking way. If you're not out of the way, you limit what comes back. So if you're putting out this desire to create money and you've got a big block around it, well, you've just filtered the answer that's coming back to you. And if you don't say it in a strong way, you don't strength, if you don't change your language, then basically what comes back is going to be based on your filter. If you take the filter off, then you get a real answer. 
So like, oh, I need to wait on this. Well, maybe you don't need to wait on it. That's what you're projecting out. <laughs> yes. On, just for example, you're on the field and your intent, like you just said, was money. Um, so your intent could be very easy. To me, it seems like, okay, I have this intent. What's blocking that intent would be one of these filters, but it would be like maybe a fear or a doubt. But that's all tied to a story. Yeah, okay, so that would still be on the outside of your yes, field yeah. then, like even those fears and doubts. Yeah, because the fears and doubts are going to be tied to a story. Right. Completely. Okay. So now, so all I've done is I've changed the language. I've always used perceptions, misperce I mean, misperceptions, beliefs, expectations, and judgments, okay? Your story is what's got all those things tied into it. Gotcha. You drop the story, those things disappear too. And the emotions come from that. Yes. Remember, your emotions come from that straight out. So if you've got this story about this, this bitch, okay, then your story is going to keep having the same effect until you change the story, but you've got to have enough mm to change it. Otherwise, all the misperceptions, beliefs, expectations, and all that are still going to be locked up in one story. Hmm. You have to like take, take the power back. You've got to take your cojones. And with authority, in the first part of that is author, you then write a new story. Otherwise, your old story is going to keep coming up because that's what you're projecting out all the time. Right. Right. You got to change that. Well, you got to change what you're putting out, because what you're putting out is exactly what you're going to get back because it's going to come back based on your frequency. Mm -hmm. So if you say I'm wealthy and wise, but you're also broadcasting out, it's got to come this way, this way, this way. Then you get a, you get a mixture of those things. So when you're tr changing that story, then you're basically saying what you want to have. I mean, what this is. Yeah. Basically saying what you want to have with that, uh -huh. and not calling her bitch. Right? Yeah, <laughs> calling her bitch is part of the story. Exactly. And, that, and that's why I want you to listen to Katie's thing because Katie's thing <laughs> had a very specific name in her story. Okay, and the name in the story was the title of the story. So she's going to keep having the same experience, the same story, because hers was idiot. Okay. So she's going to have the same fucking experience because she's putting the one, she's putting the story out there. That's the thing about self empowerment. Self empowerment is not about letting outside change you, it's about you changing outside. So if you're dependent upon what outside does to you, then you're fucked, because you don't have any power. You gotta come back to yourself and say, I don't care what shows up, I'm gonna make it do it the way I wanna do it. And then, but you, you go by your feeling, it's not a mental thing, you go by your, this is what I'm feeling in this moment. I want peace and I want tranquility in this relationship, period. That's my focus. I don't care how it's going to show up, but that's what I'm writing. You know, and then if you want to add some detail there, sometimes it's appropriate, but sometimes that's enough right there. Sometimes that's enough to change it 360 degrees to what it used to be. Um, so, and why I'm looking at the body is because the body is the mirror, or actually, yeah, the mirror of your story. So uh, up on that board up there, you see story, and then you have like a movie little, a little thingy there. Uh, basically, your story is making the movie of your life. Okay? So you change the story, and then the movie's going to change. And part of that movie is your physical body. It's where you live. It's where you work. It's all the relationships you have. That movie's only going to change by changing the story that's creating the, story, creating the movie, the physical movie. So our physical bodies, what's been my, perp, my, my whole thing in this, my search, is the physical body is the end result of our stories. Stories being what happened to us, our perceptions, misperceptions, judgments, expectations, all into one thing. So, like up, up here, my story won't involve putting Katie's eye out. Oh, okay. she's got another one. Now we don't have to strain so much. <laughs> and I'm not fully finished with this. It's going to transform a little bit more. But basically, um, so basically, your I am is in your heart. It's not in your brain. It's in your heart. Because that's the center of everything. Your brain is the servant of the heart. And then from there, everything happens. Your emotions, your neurochemicals, your hormones, all that. But this, all of this, in my opinion, is the mirror. All of it. Entirely all of it. So if you're trying to address the emotions and psychology, you're taking some chemicals to change your neurochemicals, you're taking hormones to change your hormones, you're taking things to change 
you're doing, you're getting like chakras attuned, you're getting your digestive system, taking supplements and all those things. Yeah, all those things help, but you're still just working on the mirror. That, the reflection of this is never going to change permanently until this changes. And the, the heart is fine. The heart is completely fine. At any given moment, if you can be 100% in within yourself and how you feel, that's perfectly right. Where it goes wrong are the stories that we put right in between our heart and everything else. And our stories are the things that have happened in the past. And basically, if you look at that, you can turn time around backwards, it's emit. So time, time has a way of throwing energy out. So if I'm in an old story, I'm no longer in the present. I'm no longer in the, in the moment. I'm out here in the periphery somewhere. And if you're in the periphery of a tornado, you get thrown all around. But if you're in the eye of the storm, it can, whatever's happening around you, you're still, you're still grounded and you're still powerful. But most of us are tied up in a bunch of different stories and being thrown all over the hell, everywhere we don't need to be. Um, so power, and that's personal power, bless you. Learning how to come back to your center and say no, or say what you want. And then, of course, this is way over simplified, but it's a quick snapshot. That's like the bridge between the heart and the mind. Exactly. Because the, the mind, you know, I, this is why I drew this this way. I don't want the mind to be demonized because there's nothing wrong with the mind. Here at all. The mind is the one that's actually created a lot of these things that helped us survive in childhood. Some people, you know, like with multiple personalities. That's, in certain, certain circumstances, that's the only solution the mind can come up with because it's so violent. Mm -hmm. But thank God the mind was able to do that because it mm -hmm. saved people, you know what I mean? So the mind does the best it can fucking do. It's, it's this shit that gets in the way. Um. Drink over cup of water. <laughs> You want okay. So let's fill out our sheets, the hips, um, glutes, or whatever, and see if you got any issues with these parts of your body, and then we'll, and then we'll do some sessions on it. Anybody have any issues they want to look at? Laura, back. All right. I think it's on fire. On fire. Fire. All right, let's, so let's break it down with Stephanie first. She's just hot. Hot. Yeah. Now there is heat coming off of it. That's a given. Okay. So, um, I mean, it's, it's inflamed. I feel like it's pulling into my tailbone. Okay, so what, what side is it on first? Um, it's actually both. Both? Pretty evenly, but my right hip flexor does hurt. Okay. So it's very top part into the trochanter. Okay. All right. No knees or anything like that are bothering me. Either. All right, so let's, let's, let's look at So it's on both sides, so it's male, female, right? Okay, so it could be it could be a balancing issue altogether, since it's both. Spine, of course, is right there. Into the hip area, that's going to be a balance of left and right. Um, what is that muscle associated with? Look in your color chart. Heart. Heart. Did you take that form we gave out and record what you picked up on that for her? Yeah. He needs to jump. She'll need her back one. She got a big one. No, the one yeah. that she mm -hmm. took on. That one? Oh, that one. He's already yeah. said what, what side is it left, right? Yeah. Well, pretty much center. Um, center. Um, she was talking about the right, though. The right hip flexor, trochanter area. What is that on the muscle chart? What 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 uh, element are we looking at? Huh? Fire. Fire. Heart. 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 So, um, Sex. Look with look with mm -hmm. Stephanie so she can point out specifically. Baby, share that with her. Where exactly are you? Right here. So what is that? Heart. 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 And a protector and sex, which I have everything to do with close time. All right. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, because I told her, I said you're quickly taking this from an intimate to a friendship. Mm -hmm. Because I'm having to parent literally every step every breath she is so unsure okay right. and i just literally went here's a tool put your tool belt on get to work <coughs> and that and you know because i can't do it okay come on up so we know what the issues around right mm -hmm. <laughs> already 